Rick Spielman, Tyler Sullivan in to break this one down as well. Uh, fellas, NFC North for one more week at least will remain up for grabs. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. But I think what was telling in this game is we knew Detroit could score points in bunches here, but the defense over the last couple weeks here and over this stretch has performed far more uh, execution on that side of the ball. Rick, what have you seen defensively out of Detroit that's really spurred this nice little streak of wins? Yeah, and I have maybe a little bit of an inside source since my brother works for him, so I <laughs> talked to him a little bit about, you know, why the defense has started to play better. That Well, they got back to what they were built to do, and that is to kind of two-gap up front, let your playmakers at the second level run and chase the ball, and they did a great job today. I think the Vikings only rushed for 22 total yards on offense, so that was critical. Now, they still have some holes on the defensive side, especially in the secondary. You saw J.J. have a huge game today. Cousins threw for over 425 yards and had a big game. Uh, but what's the difference is their defense is playing better. And if their defense would have played like this and they would have kept to the scheme and to the philosophy that they had now, that if they would have kept that earlier in the season, who knows where their record would be. But they're on a pretty good run right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to play the way they're playing, that they may sneak into that last spot mm. as a wild card team. Yeah, I'm right there with Rick. I mean, it is one of the bigger what ifs of the 2022 season with the Detroit Lions defense. If they had been playing to this level that we've been seeing over the last few weeks, we're not talking about them maybe sneaking into the playoff conversation. They're fully in it. They would be inside that bubble to actually be a playoff contender in my estimation. And you talk about all the stats of them being able to shut teams down, especially against the pass, not so much in this game. But one thing that did carry over a little bit was their ability to create turnovers over this winning streak or this this run that they've been on. They've been tied for first in the NFL with takeaways. They had two of them again today. If all of a sudden you're getting a nose for the football in that regard and you're giving the ball on a short field to this offense that's been able to post 30-plus points over the last few weeks, that's a dangerous opponent down the stretch. So I'm at Rick. This team could be very dangerous down the stretch and all of a sudden enters that playoff conversation, but they would have been there sooner if this defense really shaped up earlier. All right, let's talk about this Viking side now, guys, because uh, coming off – a big win against the Jets, a closely contested game that they showed some of that metal that you need come postseason time. Uh, I'll once again defer to the man with the tenure and knows the franchise very well here, Rick. What's going on right now when you suffer a loss like this at this point in the season and you're really just trying to rally the troops, get that divisional title out of the way and feel that confidence moving towards the playoffs? Us as fans, analysts, we always give pause when it comes to the Vikings at this point of the season and here they kind of uh, justify that feeling once again. What do you see in this team as you project them towards playoff time? Yeah, wh what the issue with the Vikings right now isn't the offense and what they're doing, although I did question that little trick play when mm -hmm. they should have just handed the ball off early in the game. No doubt. Uh, instead of Dalvin Cook fumbling when he was trying to, and I didn't know why they went for two. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is analysts that say this is a time of game to go for two. Not I would for me. just kick the extra point <laughs> and move on in life. What the issue is with the Minnesota Vikings right now is their defense is giving up. They're 31st or 32nd in pass defense. They're not very good, although they made some turnovers in the red zone. Um, but last week they struggled a little bit if, if the Jets don't drop that ball in the red zone. But they really have to pick up their defense. And I know Ed Donatel likes to play that shell defense, that soft bend-don't-break coverage. But if you play... Uh, a Philadelphia Eagles team again, or even like the way the Detroit Lions are rolling right now, they might be one of the most efficient, explosive offenses in the NFL. And you've seen they gave up almost 500 yards today. A playoff team that goes far usually can run the ball, and the Vikings weren't able to do that today, and they can play defense. And they're not doing either of those, that, what they showed today. Yeah, if it's bend, don't break, they're bending the tune of 400-plus yards in five consecutive games. And this time around, it's the Lions offense getting it done, whether it's on offense, through the air, on the ground, trick plays on special teams, talk, tackle eligible, however you want it, that's how they got it. Uh, last six games, now 5-1 and one, after plenty of folks were calling for Dan Campbell's job. They're scoring 29 points per game, holding teams to about nine less, exactly nine less, and a turnover differential only growing by the week.
Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters? All right, taking a look at another final here. The Buffalo Bills just outlasting the New York Jets 20 to 12. Was not the prettiest performance here by Buffalo this season, but it is another win. Uh, they're fourth in a row as they get this thing turned in the right direction at the right time. But plenty of penalties, plenty of issues. The third phase was not clean even in the fourth quarter. But they don't ask how, just how many. And it's the 10th win of the season for the Buffalo Bills. For more, we head out to Buffalo where the lead voice for the NFL on CBS is standing by. Our Tony Romo uh, here to break this one down. Tony, sort of a no picture on the scorecard Sunday for the Buffalo Bills here. Wasn't their cleanest performance of the year, but they come out of it with a win. Is it that type of Sunday where you can just put it in the win column, put it behind you and feel good about the performance? Yeah, they've done that a few times here during this last month. I feel like it's the National Football League. It's hard to win, especially, I mean, division opponents start to know you so well. As You, know, you can see it's like the tendencies that are created. Like they stop Josh Allen on a quarterback design run, and uh, most teams wouldn't know to be a little prepared for that in that moment. But I think you saw two teams fight, battle, and leave it all on the field today. But this is December football, January football. It's ugly sometimes. And the weather today... Hard to describe to people because on TV it doesn't always do it justice, but it was tough out there. The ball was really slick, and it was a steady rain throughout most of the day, and it was windy. And you saw that kind of um, allow the game to be shortened in some ways. In other words, no turnovers. Everyone was trying to protect the ball because they knew that was going to be the game changer. And the game turned on two plays, I feel like, when um, – C.J. Mosley jumped off sides mm -hmm. in the first half and it allowed Buffalo to extend their drive and go in and score the touchdown before the half. That gave you the wiggle room. And then obviously at the end of the game, uh, you know, Dawson Knox, or sorry, at the end of the game when Josh Allen kind of just took over. I mean, that's the thing is having a guy like that just control it with his legs, with his arm, and that's the game. Yeah, he is undoubtedly one of the most dominant players in this game that we love. And you outline sort of how the day maybe brought these two teams closer than they actually are. And they do protect the football here in inclement weather, which is great. But they're second in the league in turnovers. They committed their fair share of penalties, block punt in the fourth quarter. Do you think Buffalo, when you look at the rest of the AFC, can continue to succeed this way down the stretch? Buffalo is for real. Von Miller hurts. I mean, he had mm -hmm. 38 you know, pressures by himself, like quarterback pressures. The next closest is 17 with Rousseau, and then he got like 14 and 12. But by committee, they'll be able to make up for it. The problem is you're going to run into, like home field advantage is so huge on this side. Can you lose? Sure. But the likelihood that a Josh Allen loses at home or a Mahomes, you know, or a Burrow, whichever one of these guys gets that, gets a 20% advantage at least, if not, more against these other quarterbacks and that's going to be the difference to me i think these games are so big just win them however you have to do and then you know this is the time of year where guys start to separate in teams you know depth all the other stuff but home field advantage these games i'm telling you this year i think who gets home field comes out of the afc yeah it's going to be huge to see how it all plays out here down the stretch the jets now embroiled as they were coming into this game in a really tight wild card race, especially following this loss, uh, a loss of Quinn and Williams here. We'll see how long as he goes down with a non-contact injury. That's going to play huge down the stretch. But maybe a moment here for Mike White, who was in and out of the game all day, taking big hits. I mean, to strap it up and play quarterback in this league is hard enough. What did you make of White's day here and the, and the guts he showed? You got to be really proud of him. I mean, it's hard, right? This is one of the tougher teams to go against from a pass perspective. I mean, they make it difficult with the design of the defense. Schematically, they adjust to things. They're kind of simple on their end, but to us as a quarterback, it looks very, like, muddy. You can't mm -hmm. really tell who's one-on-one -on -one and what the leverage and who's double teamed. And so I thought he battled, fought hard. I think, you know, both teams wish they could have ran the ball better. Um, the Jets got it going a little bit, but truly the turnover when Flacco came in on the fumble, that was huge. Uh, just the untimely injuries today really hurt the Jets. I really think Mike White goes out, Flacco misses a throw, then the next time he goes out and faint is hurt, and now it's a turnover. I mean, that's the game. It comes down to those things in conditions like this. We will see if they can right the ship down the stretch. Uh, that's our guy, the best in the business, Tony Romo, breaking it down from Buffalo. Go get warm, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you guys.